the, the, uh, it, it all started in 2012, uh, where we, we started a DMRG winter school. And there's a Sai workshop uh, at, uh, at, uh, in Taipei. And we decided next year we're gonna hold the the, uh, the following workshop. And I think uh, the TNSS said the tensor networks uh, uh, states algorithm applications. This this name was coined by uh, Tao Shang in Beijing, and we we started using that name since. And unfortunately, last year um, the the TNSS was uh, uh, was was canceled or skipped uh, due to COVID. And fortunately, so the last uh, uh, re real person um, uh, workshop was held in, in Taipei. And this was the, this was the, the picture that's taken and a lot of friends I haven't seen for almost two years now. And hopefully next year we can have a, 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 a in-person workshop. Okay. Um, so uh, today my talk is will be about, about uh, how, how we apply the transfer matrix idea in, in quantum uh, systems with topological orders, basics to keep have uh, uh, materials, a uh, have models. And uh, initially this talk was uh, supposed to be given by Ching Yu Huang, uh, Professor Ching Yu Huang shown here, but she's uh, recently had a, a a baby, so she's very busy. So I, I'm actually giving the talk uh, for her. Um, so if you want to know more details about uh, what's presented in this talk, uh, you can find uh, the details in these two references. Okay, so let me start with the 1D icing model. Um, so this is a, a textbook uh, uh, model that everybody should have seen at some point of his uh, career. So basically let's consider 1D uh, IC model with periodic boundary condition. And in, in this case, you can write the, the Bayesian function in terms of the uh, a product of transfer matrices. And in this case, the transfer matrix is, is um, it's like this. Okay. And uh, by knowing the transfer matrix, you actually get a lot of information. If you know how to diagonalize the transfer matrix, in this case, you get the, uh, say, uh, the, 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 the partition function or the free energy in the thermodynamic limit. And you can also get a correlation length. And in the uh, pictorial language of uh, tensor networks, you can write your, your transfer matrix or your partition function in terms of uh, as this, in terms of the product of uh, of these transfer matrices, and this idea um, can also be extended to two dimensional. Um, it's just that uh, normally we don't write in terms of some weights, or, or um, we we write in terms of some some tensors. Okay, but. Uh, if you have these tensors, then you can glue your, your, your tensors together and you, you can also apply this, uh, this uh, idea of transfer matrices and get the similar things like uh, um, correlation lens and try to diagnose this uh, uh, transfer matrix. Okay. And uh, the one th thing to note is that uh, actually any classical partition function can be written as a tensor network. Um, so, so what I'm going to talk about today is to try to apply this, uh, these ideas in the classical statistical mechanics into uh, some quantum systems. And in particular, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the familiar tensor network states. Uh, first, I will use a matrix flux states uh, as a, a simple example um, to discuss what I, I what I mean by a system with topology. And uh, um, I'm going to extend this idea to caps. Um, so I think um, many people in, in this workshop is going to talk more or less uh, about other uh, tensor network states. So I want to slightly deviate from this 1D uh, uh, icing model by applying a transverse field. 
Um, so this is the, the IC model, 1D IC model with the transverse field. We know that uh, when, when the transverse field is zero, we have two ground states, two degenerate ground states. Uh, one is all spins up and the other is all spins down. So if we, in this case, if we want to create an excitation, an excitation, um, basically I just create a domain wall. Um, so I basically apply a, a sigma x operator from say side i to to the to to the right boundary, and in this case this will create a lowest energy excitation um, in this system. So we call this the domain wall state. Um, we can consider another uh, limit. Um, sorry, in this case, uh, this uh, this domain wall state is well defined. So if I consider uh, it as a as a wave function and it is uh, is normalizable and uh, um, it is orthogonal to uh, both of the ground states. Um, another limit is uh, we uh, uh, let the transverse field goes to infinity. Okay. Um, so my ground state is a polarized state uh, in the x direction. So spin will pointing in the x direction. Uh, to create the excitation, the lowest energy excitation is actually just flip one spin. Um, so I apply a sigma z in uh, one of the spins. In this case, uh, I apply a sigma z on the ground state at the side i. Um, so, but we can also try to create a, the, the, the domain wall state using this, this ansatz. So this may be look may look odd, but uh, I'm just going to define my domain wall state as uh, uh, apply a, a, a half infinite string or, or, or string um, to my ground state. But when I do that, um, I cannot get a, a new ground state in this case. So, so that means that uh, my domain wall state is actually the same as my ground state. So if uh, we refer this as the domain wall is condensed, um, we can also add, add a, a longitud longitudinal field. Um, in this case, uh, the excitation is just uh, uh, apply a single sigma x on the ground state. Um, but if we want to follow this uh, this ansatz uh, creating a, a so-called domain wall state. Um, uh, we, we realized that we cannot really do this because um, if I apply the half infinite string on, on this uh, on the ground state, the cause uh, basically uh, uh, a, a large energy. So by this, we mean that we cannot really uh, get this domain wall state. And uh, so this is a, a now well defined state. So we, we say this domain wall state is confined. So this is a, a little bit uh, different language from, from, from the transverse field uh, language, IC model that you are familiar with, but we're gonna use this language throughout. Um, so we want to uh, start from a, a phase where a domain wall is, uh, is well-defined. We want to develop a tensor network frame to study this transition to domain wall condensed and domain wall confined phase. So uh, the first thing to do is we, we want to encode the degenerate ground states in a single uh, MPS. Um, the way to do it is actually um, go to this uh, uh, so-called so cast state. So um, if I encode the spin up as zero, uh, spin down as zero, spin up as one, or vice versa, then um, what I can do is I, I, I can um, construct a, a cast state. Um, which is the uh, superposition of these two states. And um, then I can define a, 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 a matrix box state okay, by choosing this, this uh, A0 and A1 matrices. And it turns out this, uh, this matrix okay, uh, is Z, Z2 invariant. So by Z2 invariant is uh, if I have a, a group element uh, in Z2, um, say it's identity, or, or in this case, I can just apply a, a poly sigma. 
the poly, uh, sigma z, poly z, and this matrix is invariant. Okay. Um, so I have two group elements. I can do this. I can, you can one can easily check. Uh, uh, these two matrices actually uh, correspond. This uh, has this uh, a condition, and by this we we call it a z two invariant. Um, and using this uh, this uh, this property, uh, actually we can just uh, get a, 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 a the other degenerate ground state. So there are two superpositions I, I can get. I can have a first ground state plus the second ground state, or I can have a first ground state minus second ground state. And to achieve that, one can just uh, apply the sigma z um, to this state, to insert a sigma z uh, anywhere. Okay. And to create a, a, a domain wall, okay, it turns out, um, Remember that we recall that we, we want to create a domain wall by uh, applying sigma x to one of the, the, the ground state um, from one side to the, the, the one boundary. Um, but if I apply a sigma x on this matrix A, and there's a, this condition, so I can push this uh, physical operation uh, into this virtual bounds, and this virtual bound corresponds to um, an Pauli X operation on the virtual bound. Okay, so if I push half of them, um, so two sigma X's will will, will be become identity, but there will be a one a sigma one sigma X on the virtual bound uh, remain. So I can combine this uh, sigma X and A. I can define a domain wall tensor, and this is uh, corresponds to uh, uh, an excitation. Okay, so in this language, um, I if I start with a, a Z2 invariant uh, 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 tensor, um, a Z2 invariant matrix, then I can construct a, 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 a MPS that I can access two degenerate ground states by adding the, uh, uh, the group element. Okay. And um, uh, it's shown that you this, MPS can, corresponds to um, a, a parent Hamiltonian, of, which is a sum of local terms. And this parent Hamiltonian is a, is a frustration free, okay, which means that um, all the, all the uh, local terms are, uh, are, are, are I mean, this uh, matrix corresponds to a ground state of these uh, local terms. Okay? And then, this parent Hamiltonian cannot really detect this uh, group operation. Okay. Um, so um, this becomes uh, some uh, virtual operations that uh, you can uh, play around with. Okay. And the other thing is that um, this domain wall becomes uh, something like this. So I can group this with uh, as a, as a, as a B, another new tensor. And th this new tensor is a Z2, uh, anti-invariant, okay, so if you apply the, this uh, sigma z here, you pick up a minus sign here because you have this anti-commutation relation for sigma x and sigma z. So um, with this uh, uh, understanding, we can ask the question, um, does a, a z2 uh, invariant MPS implies a z2 symmetric, uh, z2 symmetry breaking ground state? Because we started with the, some, uh, uh, some symmetry uh, breaking ground states um, uh, in mind because we have uh, we started with the uh, IC model. But it turns out uh, not necessarily because um, it can uh, in, in this language um, you can have a so-called domain wall condensed phase where by by creating a domain wall you you you, you still have the ground state or you have another uh, phase which is called domain wall confined uh, phase. Um, so now it's important to, to study the norm of this, uh, this uh, states. Uh, for example, one can study the uh, norm of the, the ground state. And if I take uh, uh, this to, to be infinity, then this becomes a transfer matrix for this A, A dagger. And this transfer matrix 
um, can have two uh, eigenvectors. Um, so uh, maximum eigenvectors uh, or eigenvectors left and right eigenvectors correspond to the maximum eigenvalue. Um, so this norm becomes the product of these two eigenvectors. And domain wall stay, so basically um, the rest of them are the transfer matrices. Um, then this domain norm of the domain wall stay becomes the, the product, uh, the, the expectation value. Uh, in this left and right eigenvector of this x times x operator. And uh, uh, the overlap of the domain wall and the ground state now becomes uh, this uh, just uh, x times the identity. Okay. And in, in, in the following, what we're going to discuss is, um, is the case that left and right eigenvectors are the same. So we just denote them using a, a row. Um, so notice the, the, the notation here, um, we're, we're using a bracket like uh, the notation, but instead of the uh, bracket, we should use the, uh, uh, the bracket here. Okay. Uh, so as you will see, this will have corresponds to uh, something very similar to uh, the broadcast state, but in, in a different uh, space. Okay, um, so with this, I can uh, uh, summarize um, what we discussed before using this uh, uh, by identifying this, uh, this uh, uh, looking at the domain wall norm, norm of the domain wall wave function and the overlap of this domain wall wave function um, to identify different phases of, uh, of, uh, of the system. And, and uh, by looking at uh, transform this, into this uh, this so-called uh, the virtual order parameters. So what I need to do is just calculate the the, the uh, so-called expectation value or the the uh, expectation value of the, this row uh, with uh, of this uh, x times x operator and this x times i operator. Okay. But notice this is an operator lives um, uh, in this in this uh, space. Um, so we can summarize from what we discussed a couple of slides uh, 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 ago as this symmetry breaking phase, which is a uh, domain was uh, well defined. So this is, should give you identity and this should be, uh, this should be give you one and this should give, give you zero. In your domain will condense, this is a uh, well, if this is norm is one, but this, the domain was the same as the the ground state. And uh, so for the domain wall confined phase, um, but the domain was not, not well defined. So both are zero. So using this, I, I can distinguish a uh, 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 topologically non-trivial where I can create domain wall and topological trivial uh, uh, states. Um, so it turns out, um, one can also define a so-called uh, uh, a transfer matrix, uh, transfer Hamiltonian, um, basically corresponds to this uh, this log of this transfer matrix, and uh, and this uh, this fixed point, what this uh, this maximum eigenvector we call a fixed point, corresponds to to the ground state of this transfer matrix uh, Hamiltonian. Okay, um, so then then all this can be understood through this uh, symmetry breaking um, of this transfer matrix uh, Hamiltonian. And uh, the, another interesting uh, thing is one can also extract uh, the excitation uh, spectrum uh, from this, uh, this uh, transfer matrix. Okay? Um, so the, the proposed by this uh, Zauer et, et al. One can identify at least a low lying expectations um, uh, at uh, using just uh, the, the second uh, uh, excited uh, second uh, largest uh, uh, eigenvalue of this transfer matrix. Okay, um, so here shown are several examples, and one can see this uh, extrema. Of this uh, this transfer matrix 
um, does give you the 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 um, the momentum, the uh, and the uh, and the uh, uh, correspond the, the the momentum where the the uh, excitation is the lowest. Okay, um, so we want to uh, uh, generalize this to two dimension. So we want to generalize this idea to uh, to to paths. Okay, so. If we can start with the Z2 invariant paths, um, the definition is basically if I take a group element, this uh, this uh, path tensor is uh, invariant under this uh, this uh, group uh, operation on, on the virtual bounds, and then I can uh, in two D to create a a, a degenerate ground states, I apply this uh, this uh, 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 Wilson loop. Uh, on the virtual bound. So basically I have a, a string of sigma z uh, along the, say this y, uh, y direction and x direction. So uh, in this case, I can create a fourfold degenerate ground states. And to create an excitation, I can so also uh, do something similar to, to um, in the 1D case, uh, I can insert sigma x uh, on one of the bounds and this will give me the, the uh, uh, a uh, domain wall tensor, but um, I can also just insert a, a half infinite string. So um, in this case, this is a, a, a charge excitation, flux excitation, and the bound state of flux and, 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 and charge co corresponds to a fermion. So this one can uh, directly get the, this, uh, this, uh, um, this historical like uh, uh, language just um, by manipulating the, the tensors uh, in the virtual uh, uh, space. Um, so um, we can follow this very similar workflow for this uh, um, uh, C2 invariant MPS. Um, so assume that you, you, you want to get, you, you have some unknown Hamiltonian and we can find the optimal Z2 invariant paths. And then we can evaluate uh, the virtual order parameters to de determine the phases. Um, so in this case, this, uh, this table becomes, uh, 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 because there's a fourfold degenerate ground states, so becomes a four by four uh, uh, matrix. Okay? Um, so I can also apply the uh, different uh, 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 field uh, for, of the, say, for, for the torical Hamiltonian, and I can have a, let's say, charge condenser phase where the identity and the, the, the vacuum and the charge excitations are, are the same. Okay. And uh, I have a flux confinement for, for the for flux uh, 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 a particle. And I can also have flux condensation. Okay. And uh, so uh, the way to do it is uh, again construct this transfer matrix. Um, and find a, a, a maximum eigenvector. And you, one can also com, uh, compute uh, the excitation um, by looking at the uh, uh, subdominant eigenvalues. And finally, um, one can also using these uh, uh, different symmetries uh, of this excitation to distinguish different types of physical excitations. Um, so, this is uh, basically a, a, a direct generalization of what we discussed in the 1D case. Um, basically, if we were trying to create an excitation and see if it's the same as the ground state. If it's the same as the ground state, we call it uh, the, this uh, state uh, uh, is condensed. But there's something more um, because um, uh, in the torical case, uh, we know that uh, the uh, the ground state, um, we can we, we can easily identify all this uh, all, all these uh, uh, different say ground states and charge excitation states in in these limits. Um, so we want to ask the question: Is it possible the particle uh, particles don't have to condense with the the, the vacuum? Okay, um, so. If we just uh, look at these tables, uh, there are a lot of uh, other possibilities. Um, 
So we basically, we can consider all these possible uh, cases of this anion condensation. So the anion condensation with quotation mark. So the first uh, three cases are, are condensed with uh, the identity, with a vacuum. So we know that the fermions cannot condense. So due to the statistics, so we don't, we, we can cross this out. And uh, so we can cross this out because we know that uh, the uh, statistics for, for these charge and flux uh, anions are, are bo bosonic. Um, so they cannot identify uh, um, with a, a fermion. But there's another case, this bo two bosons are, are, are we can identify. And it turns out this corresponds to a, a, a non-abelian non phase. Okay. Um, so uh, we propose that one can look at the uh, uh, so-called this, uh, this uh, E and M um, to be, uh, we can identify them. So basically that the overlap E and M is one. Um, so this, um, one can uh, identify this as, a, as a, 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 the icing anions in the, uh, in the torical case, uh, it's in the KTF model case, okay? Um, and one can also easily check that this fusion rule is consistent by letting this uh, sigma to be E plus M. Um, but the, the, the problem is uh, we cannot really have this type of braiding rules because uh, by considering Z2 invariant paths, we can never describe this, uh, this exactly the non-obedient phase. Um, so, uh, but we can uh, at least detect the, the, the emergence of this uh, non-obedient phase. Um, and we want to emphasize that uh, the E and M shouldn't be, it's not that far to show that they, they both transmute into a, a sigma, you know, this uh, icing anions. Okay, and we need other evidence. Um, so the, the concrete model that we, we want to look at uh, first is this uh, uh, is this a KTF model on the star lattice. Um, okay. So uh, this model is basically you, you generalize a, a KTF model, but you have these uh, triangles. Um, so you have two parameters uh, you can tune. You have this J prime, which is the uh, uh, correspond to this uh, blue bounds and this J correspond to this red bounds. And um, one can do a, 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 a perturbative study, uh, expand along two limits. Um, one limit is an isolated dimer limit. And one can show this corresponds to a torical ground state. The ground state corresponds to a torical ground state. Um, so this is basically corresponds to a, a Z2 topological order. Um, in the limit of uh, isolated triangle, um, so this basically uh, goes back to this KTF Honeycomb model. And we know the, the isotropic ground state. Uh, ground state for isotropic KTF Honeycomb model uh, uh, have uh, icing anions. Um, so, um, so it turns out this model is uh, exactly solvable. Um, so this is a, a good test ground to to uh, to check uh, if uh, our idea for this uh, this uh, uh, Z two invariant uh, paths uh, to use the Z two invariant paths to detect the, the transition into a non topological order. Uh, the ansatz we use uh, is a Z two invariant ansatz, um, which is uh, uh, proposed by uh, Li et al. Um, so what we study is. Uh, so this is to uh, this uh, loop gas ansatz. Um, it's a actually it's a projector. So if you apply this uh, projector to uh, any injective to paths, will give you a Z two injective paths, or Z you can broadly consider this into Z two invariant paths. Um, so uh, one can tune this uh, this uh, uh, ini initial product state to get uh, a, a different uh, ground state wave functions. And what one can also uh, try to generate this um, by applying uh, another projector, um, which I will, will not go into details. 
Um, so here uh, is just uh, some definition of this uh, loop, loop gas uh, projector. Um, um, I think uh, there's a, one of the calls will, will be the, the speaker later. So maybe he will talk a, a little bit about this. Um, so basically this projector has some properties. This projector commutes with the, the uh, with the, uh, 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 this uh, vortex flux uh, operator. So uh, this uh, basically projects uh, into a, a vortex-free uh, space. And another property is that this projector, um, if I insert a, a sigma z somewhere, then it corresponds to uh, uh, this string corresponds to creating the, the vortices at open ends. Um, so we can test this. Um, so first we notice that uh, if I, I use this uh, loop gas uh, uh, state, what I'll get is that, um, so this is a, a, this is a sigma C um, is the, the point. Okay, uh, I, I failed to, to discuss this thing, but this uh, theta are basically just uh, uh, a a parameterization of the uh, uh, of the coupling constant. Okay, um, so one can look at uh, so this is a basic uh, uh, the transfer matrix, and the transfer matrix uh, uh, eigenvalues actually corresponds to to the the overlap of these different um, different uh, 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 minimal entangled states. Okay, so one can see that when, when we start from a, 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 a small size extended to, to larger system size, um, anything that uh, is not, it's not one will basically, um, will, will, will basically uh, goes to zero, okay? So for example, this uh, epsilon identity, uh, Overlap between the fermion and the, the vacuum goes to zero when you go to a, 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 a when you when you uh, away from this uh, this uh, this point. Okay, so um, if we look at this uh, this table here, we see that only this and uh, this green uh, part are. Uh, um, eigenvalues are on non-zero, okay? So when we uh, notice that when my theta is not at sigma c, so these guys are, are, are less than one, and this one is, uh, uh, is, is one, okay? So it's basically mm and uh, identity, identity, okay? So it's here, okay? Um, so which means that all these uh, this, uh, minimal entangled states are orthogonal and, and normalizable. And so anywhere around, uh, away from the same theta equal to theta, the theta C corresponds to a, a Z2 topological phase. But at this uh, theta C, um, basically uh, all these are, uh, this M and E is equal to M and M. And it's larger than this uh, lambda i uh, 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 identity and epsilon. So, which means that when L goes to infinity, you're, you're only you're left with with this term, right? Um, and so, um, so this uh, this corresponds to you can identify M and E are the same at this point. But we also have this one close to, uh, to one, but as we know that this fermion cannot ident uh, be identified as a vacuum because of statistics, um, which means that at this point corresponds to a parallel decay correlation. Um, so again, we can um, also see the similar things um, in this more uh, uh, more involved answers, okay. But um, I want to sh uh, 
emphasize is just when 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 you look at this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, transfer matrix spectrum, you see this corresponds to the in this area corresponds to the uh, uh, non abelian phase, and this corresponds to the uh, abelian phase. So this you have a Z2 uh, topological order. And at this point, you see all these uh, transformatory uh, eigenvalues uh, become one. Okay? And this corresponds to the, the place where the, the uh, entanglement entropy for M changes from log two to log uh, square of two. Um, so then can we safely say that uh, this uh, charge annual and uh, flux annual now become the same state? Um, one has to be careful, but since we have the transfer matrix and we can try to uh, look at the, the, all the eigenvalues. Okay? And we did find that uh, there's a threefold degeneracy um, in the non abelian phase. Okay? So the circle corresponds to epsilon, uh, uh, epsilon and one one, but one should see, uh, okay, so one should see that one one. Uh, uh, there's a, a e and e e m m m m. So for example, this one, this uh, corresponds to e uh, overlap between e and e, and e and m and m m. So we do have a threefold degeneracy at this uh, at, at this uh, momentums. Okay, and okay, one can see that the 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 fermion cannot uh, be condensed. Because you have finite, uh, had a finite um, momentum. Okay, um, so in this case, we can safely say this is a, a this a, a, we can identify E and M are the same particle. Okay, um, due to the time limit, um, I'll just uh, uh, quickly go over this. And uh, in this paper, uh, um, they propose this uh, LG and the string gas state cannot can cannot be can be used to describe a gap uh, chiral spin liquid. Well, there's a no go theorem saying that the parent Hamiltonian of chiral uh, perhaps is gapless. And as we we show in our, our calculations, actually the the non phase phase um, your 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 uh, transfer matrix spectrum for I, identity and uh, epsilon. It's actually maximum value is, is one. And this uh, corresponds to some gapless uh, 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 excitations. Okay. Um, uh, but I think that there's a loophole here. Um, it turns out the all this no goal theorem is describing the uh, 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 um, parent Hamiltonian. So parent Hamiltonian has to be gapless. But um, one can uh, definitely uh, using this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this ansatz whose uh, parent Hamiltonians are gapless, but uh, you can definitely use this uh, this uh, gap Hamiltonian um, can to approximate. Uh, you can uh, using this ansatz to approximate uh, this uh, gap uh, uh, Hamiltonian. In this case, the star uh, last Hamiltonian. Okay, um, so I'm running out of time. I don't have time to talk about this uh, spin one KTAF uh, model. Um, so we, we, I just want to uh, say that using the same ansatz, one can extract a lot of information, say the spec excitation um, uh, information. And in this case, we use the, the ansatz to, to identify this, uh, the low line excitation of uh, Spin one um, KTAF model on, on a honeycomb lattice as a, a, as a bosonic uh, excitation. Okay. Um, and the, the system is, has a gap to a ground state. Um, okay. Um, so these are the, the take home message. Um, so basically, we, we, one can use the, this Z2 symmetric tensors. Um, by using the uh, virtual order parameter to understand this Z2 topological order. And uh, why can easy, also use the spectra of the transfer matrix 
um, to give a, a lot of information about low lying station and their statistics. Um, um, so I, I want to advertise uh, um, a little bit is uh, our ongoing uh, uh, work is that one can generalize all this uh, this uh, uh, Z2 projector to Zn to study more complicated model. And um, we're working on something called a graphical T tensor neighbor operator, which is can be um, sort of like uh, unify all these uh, uh, discussions. Um, with that, um, I, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, India. So is it, there any question or comment? Okubo san, please. Thank you very much for your nice talk. Uh, can I ask a question about the sure. second statement? So yeah. you said that the loop gas and string gas state can uh, approximate the gapped ground state of the star lattice. So, but I, th I think if the correlation length is infinite, uh, I think that it is not a good approximation for the gapped ground state. Is that correct? Uh, I, I think, uh, so as you can see in, in this version of study, mm -hmm. I think you, you're on the on the author list. So you can never really get the, the exact, uh, you can get very good, but there's always uh, some deviation somewhere. So, yes. so uh, you can try to approximate that, that using a, 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 a gapless state. But as you can see, is that you can can variationally be very good, uh, but you can never get the exact wrong state. So the energy expectation value is good, but yes. the, I think uh, quantitatively the state is different from the capital state. Yes, yes. That, uh, that, uh, uh, so can, can, can we use such state to investigate the ground state of the this gap uh, topological state. Uh, so uh, I think I, the, I, I think you 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 need to add some some states which is gapped. If this state uh -huh. is a, a well, uh, I, I should say this. So this state is gapless, correspond mm -hmm. to a pair Hamiltonian. Yes. So, but your, your, your Hamiltonian is not a pair Hamiltonian. So I should, should say it this way. So yeah, for, for this pair Hamiltonian, this state is not gap, gapless. So I, I should correct my statement. So it's basically, it's a good ansatz. That's a variational ansatz to study a state, but a no goal theorem just say, okay, this is, uh, it's pair Hamiltonian is, uh, is gapless. But this wave function, I uh, can I say something? So, yeah, sure. but you said that the correlation function is uh, shows the power law decay. Is that correct? So, because yes. correlation length is infinite. Yes, but uh, be, but be, uh, you have to be careful here. This corresponds to the correlation length in the parent Hamiltonian of this. Uh, this oh, okay. State. So the transformation is constructed by this state. So. This state oh, is the ground state of some pair Hamiltonian. But I think the loophole here is that uh, this state is a good answer uh, to describe a chiral uh, spin liquid, but if there's no violation of the no-go theorem because the no-go theorem oh, says that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's talking about a pair Hamiltonian, has mm -hmm. nothing to do with uh, 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 variational answers for uh, a given Hamiltonian. And that, that's our statement. Oh, okay. Hey, thank you so much. Okay, so is there any other question or comment? Hi. Uh, Nishino san, please. Nishino. Yeah, you have explained how to construct topological uh, phases uh, on the planar graph. Regular lattices like uh, square lattice or uh, cagomeral lattice, etc. 
uh, is it possible to extend that sort of uh, classification of the ground state to those graphs, uh, lattices, those are, where those are on the hyperbolic lattice? Uh, such, uh, so on the hyperbolic space, there are many uh, sort of hyperbolic tessellations, and it is it might be possible to construct the same arguments on those lattices. And uh, on the hyperbolic lattice, if you in, uh, impose uh, periodic boundary condition uh, uh, properly, you can construct uh, 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 torus of higher genus. So probably there are much richer structure on those lattices on the hyperbolic plane with a periodic, periodic boundary condition. And what is your opinion for those extensions? Uh, I think this is a, a very interesting idea um, because what we actually rely on is just when we apply the, uh, uh, so I think let me go back. So uh, a lot of this discussion is actually rely on. Um, sorry, MPS is probably easier to, to see. So a lot of this is actually depends on can you have this uh, this kind of relation when you push a, a, a physical operation and how it corresponds to this, and this uses the uh, end commutation relation. So I think uh, a lot of this construction not necessarily have to do with what kind of graph you're, you're on. So I think that's a very interesting idea to explore. And maybe there was something uh, more exotic uh, in this case that we should discuss offline. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Okay, is there any other question or comments? Okay, I have a uh, rather a technical question about yes. your computation. So uh, you calculated some overlap of uh, topologically classified uh, state vectors. And right. I think this kind of argument is in principle justified for the wave function in the bulk limit. Uh, yes. So, of course, you analyze some finite size dependencies uh, in uh, some graph. Uh, so this is- My, a... my, my, my question is, uh, do you apply some tiny zips broken field in your numerical computation? Uh, okay, so actually we don't get the wave function directly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so let me see. If I skip some of the slides. Uh, so, so basically, okay, so I, I don't have my the slide in here. Um, so actually, we don't directly compute this because we don't uh -huh. get the uh -huh. wave function. So uh -huh. what we did is basically, so we, we know this, uh, this, uh, this uh, transfer matrix. Uh, so. Um, so we can try to compute uh, the transfer matrix, but in different sectors. Uh -huh. So because uh, this, this excitation uh, corresponds to different uh, um, sectors, you can have uh, yeah. different parities and, and we, we compute using the uh, sort of like a, growing on a ring type of thing, uh -huh. and we diagonalize that. And so we can identify this uh, overlap with the eigenvalue, the maximum eigenvalue of uh -huh. the, 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 the transfer matrix. So all we need to just get this tensor. So we get this tensor. Uh, I see, I see. Uh, okay, and then we just add uh, the uh, Z strings or add uh, this uh, sigma X uh -huh. and to get different sectors. Okay, I see. Thank you. So, uh, is there any other question? Ah, okay. Please, uh, Lee San. Um, hello. Thanks for the nice talk. Uh, just a follow up kind of technical question, also very basic question. That 
So when you have this kind of Z2 invariant PEPs or MPS, isn't it non-injective such that the the boundary M, the boundary tensors, the fixed point would actually be degenerate also? So how do you choose a which one that you should take? Uh, no, but uh, in this case, we 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 actually uh, I use Z2 invariant here, but we actually we are all using Z2 injective PEPs. And uh, and uh, in, uh, if we don't you don't have uh, this uh, different symmetries, then they they are degenerate, right? But mm -hmm. the way we can construct this table is um, we basically just uh, apply different. So basically, you can have different quantum numbers. You have different combinations. So in a sense that it becomes a. a you, you kind of leave a degeneracy. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay um, so I delete that slide. So, is there any other question or comment? So, if not, let's thank speaker again. Okay. Thank you very much.